Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right, beloved. So you have another day, a new day to get into the word, to draw closer to Father, to get some scriptures in, some scriptures in context, to, I don't know, listen to whatever Father's saying, um, to lift up his name higher, to bring him glory, to study together as a family, to just try and help each other not attack each other help each other okay so here we go so today we're looking at um this piece which was from not yesterday but the continuing he says i will come to you and i will not leave you orphans father i just pray up father that right now you will have your way, Lord God, that you would teach the lesson like you always do, Daddy. You are the teacher, Jesus, and we are the students, and I'm a student too, Papa. So feed your sheep, and I pray that I will not give my private interpretation, but I will give what you give in your holy and precious name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All right. It says, I'm with you, I will come to you. Okay, so yes, it was, I, I'm with you. I will come to you, I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. Okay, so let me open the scripture page. You can do that if you want to and follow along. Just type in the scripture in a new window every time I hear a scripture or whatever he gives, okay? So you can test the words yourselves. That's what I encourage. Um, or you can write it down, but of course, typing it is easier. Um, okay, the first thing I hear is, why are you steering up into the sky? The same Jesus you saw leave will return. Something like that. Why are you staring up into the sky? Um, so we're looking at Acts 1 verse 11. And we're reading the before and after scripture, which is 10 to 12. Yeah, also here, some of the disciples were sad. Some of the disciples were sad, okay? So, Acts 1, 11, we're reading verse 10 to 12, and it says, they were looking intently at the sky as he was going so he's ascending and they're looking and suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them the angels men of galilee okay so we're going into the two olive just a second hey come on Two olive trees on the bunk. So I guess I don't need this in front of me right now. I can put it on the side somewhere. Right here. Or here. Okay, here we go. Which one do I read first, Paul? Okay, this one, the two olive trees. Zachariah 4 11. Can you hear me? I hope you can hear me. Let me, and I need to take down just a notch. Yeah, this is loud. Can you hear me? Can somebody give me a thumbs up or something? I don't know if I can hear anything. Um, I, I don't know if you can hear anything. Um, okay, open your scripture page again. Zechariah 4.11. Actually, no, just a second. Revelation 11.4. Zechariah 4.11, yeah, I said it right. 
So we're looking at Zechariah 4.11 first. Power is in your name. Okay, here we go. Zechariah 4.11. And it says, For who has despised the day of small things? But these seven eyes of the Lord, which scan the whole earth. Again, he loves seven. Okay, God loves seven for a completion number. So, okay, so who has despised the day of small things? But these seven eyes of the Lord, which scan the whole earth. You know, the Bible says that the eyes of the Lord run to and fro on the earth but yes the eyes of the lord is in every place it runs through and to and fro i hear it runs to and fro so we're going power is near me second chronicles 16 9 And it says, reading from verse, just a second. Verse 8 to 10. All right, and it says, Were not the Ethiopians and the Lubims a huge host with very many chariots and horsemen? Yea, because thou didn't reply, didst, re, did, did, okay, didst. Because thou did reply, rely on the Lord, he delivered them into thy hand. Because thou didst rely on the Lord, he delivered them into thy hand. Their enemies. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. Again, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. Now wait. Something you saying about the word again. Okay, so we're going to look at this one here right now. He is he is like the wind. He's like the waves of the sea. Not the wind, the waves. Okay, there we go. James 1, 6. Okay, James 1, 6, reading from 5 to 7. And he said, if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God. Who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. Why? Because remember, he says that my people are perishing for a lack of knowledge, and the God desires no man to perish, but all to come unto repentance. So if you don't understand something and you ask Father, He's going to show you. James 1, 5 to 7. If any one of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault. And it will be given to him. Remember he said this as well. He said, God has no partiality with men who's a respectable person okay so we got a bit to just open here okay so first what were we reading first okay so we're reading james 1 5 to 7 if anyone of you lacks wisdom we should ask god who gives generously to all without finding fault and it'll be given to him but he must ask in faith so stop so then we heard, my people are perishing for a lack of knowledge. Hosea 
four, six. Verse five to seven, and it says, you stumble, you will stumble by day. The prophet will stumble with you by night. So I will destroy your mother. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge. And what is, what? remember the Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and understanding. Okay, so he says, they've rejected knowledge. They don't want to know. And remember, this ties into yesterday where he says, they're just covering their eyes. They don't want to know. They don't want to know him. Um, last night, actually. Looking at Proverbs 9, 10. And it says, voice of father proverbs 9 10 the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom so we're reading verse 9 to 11 mm -hmm. Instruct a wise man. What did he say? Instruct a wise man. Now, what kind of wise man he's talking about? A man who is not wise in his own eyes, but wise in the Lord. Instruct a wise man. He's humble. He's willing to learn. Instruct a wise man, and he will be wiser still. Teach a righteous man. And he will increase in his learning because the righteous are humble. Listen, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One. So what do they, they don't, they don't want, they reject knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the beginning, starting point of wisdom. So you'll be wise to know that there is a God because a fool says in his heart there is no God so the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding so they don't want knowledge they don't want to understand for through wisdom your days will be multiplied and years will be added to your life let's tell you how stupid Men have become, when I say man, I mean humans, humanity, because we've gone from thousands of years to hundreds to 100. They don't want it. They just don't want the knowledge. They don't want the wisdom. They don't want to know. They want to do their own thing. All right. So we're looking at, um, I'm sorry, what did I say just now? Where was I? Okay, right. I was looking at Proverbs 9, verse 9. And it, um, verse 10, sorry. And it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and under, a knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. For through wisdom, your days will be multiplied and years will be added to your life. There's a commandment somewhere inside of there that says, Honor your father and your mother that your days will be long in the land. We're going to Deuteronomy somewhere, I think, as well. We're going into Exodus 20, 12. Do we have something in Deuteronomy? I want something from Deuteronomy as well. Exodus 20, 12. And it says, for verse 11 to 13, for in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that is in them, but on the seventh day he rested. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and set it apart as holy. 
Honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land the Lord God is giving you. And you shall not murder. And he begins to list the, um, the commandments. Anything in Deuteronomy? I want Deuteronomy 6. Deuteronomy 6, verse 2. So reading verse 1 to 3. And it says, Bring stuff in the name of Jesus. You're falling toward. Deuteronomy 6, verse 1 to 3. We have a, a, a tropical storm coming this way, I think. Here's what he says. These are the commandments and statutes and ordinances that the Lord your God has instructed me to teach you. Again, these are the commandments and statutes and ordinances that the Lord your God has instructed me to teach you to follow in the land you're about to enter and possess. The rain is slowing down. You hear it? It's flowing, it's flowing less. Give me one minute. This the city floods, you know. The drains overflow and then snakes come out and all kinds of craziness. Okay. So Deuteronomy 6 1 and he says, These are the commandments and statutes and ordinances that the Lord your God has instructed me to teach you to follow in the land you're about to enter and possess. Why? Because they are possession, they are purchased possession. Even like us, we are a purchased possession of the Lord. Just like the children of Israel were a, a it's a tongue twister. <laughs> they are purchased possession of the Lord, a holy people, a a, cho a a chosen generation, a peculiar people. God wants holiness in His people to bring them into the land. Just like he wants holiness in his bride to bring her into the city. Okay, so here's what he said. These are the commandments and statutes and ordinances that the Lord your God has instructed me to teach you to follow in the land you're about to enter and possess. Verse 2, so that you and your children and your grandchildren may, what? Fear the Lord your God. And all the days of your lives, by keeping his statutes and commandments that I give you, <clears throat> and so that your days may be prolonged or extended, your life will be extended. So when you are obedient, when you are pure in heart, when you are geared on doing righteously in the Lord's eyes, your days are lengthened. Verse 3. Hear, O Israel, and be careful to observe them, so that you may prosper and multiply greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey. Oh, I love this song. It's so anointed. Anointed. And he says, Hear, O Israel, and be careful to observe them, so that you may prosper and multiply greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey. Good stuff. Just as the Lord, your God, of the God of your fathers, has promised you. So God points us to where obedience will take us. Obedience to Him. Doing things to His glory. Now... Second, I'm looking at Proverbs 9 11 now, and it says, For through wisdom your days will be multiplied and years will be added to your life. Okay, so we're going into Romans 2. Okay. 
there's no partiality with God. So we're looking at verse 10 to 12. How worthy is my Lord! Romans 2, 10 to 12. Just a second, okay? So it's 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 going. I was stopping the rain a little bit. Well, Father was stopping the rain. Okay, Romans two. Should I continue to pray? So it stops. Romans two, ten to twelve. But glory and honor and peace to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Why did he say that for every man that works good? The same reason that I just said, whatever you do is pleasing unto God, and your days will be extended. For there is no respecter, for there is no respecter of person, there's no respect of persons with God. Verse 12, for as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law. Just a second again, okay? All of it. All of it. Not just a hard downpour. Right now. Okay, we can go with that. Yay! I have to shout. Romans 2, verse 10 to 12. All right. With glory and honor and peace unto every man that works you good, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. For there is no respect of persons with God. Here we go. For as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law. If you want to live lawlessly, well, that's what it means. Listen, and as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. Now, people twist this and they turn this into their own jamboree. But here's what God says. As many as have sinned without the law 
shall also perish with our Lord. So you want to be lawless, then okay, you perish. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. If you've sinned in the law, you know the law, you know it is good, and yet you go on sinning, you will be judged by the law. Okay, wait. But it also tells us of Christ putting away from us, right? So again, it's not us doing. It's him inside of us. It's him who is quickening our minds and our hearts and just to do the right thing. Okay. We're going into um, 2 Peter 3, 9, because God desires nobody to perish. Father wants all to be saved. I don't know what she's saying there, but it's so fluffy. How great is my Lord? Second Peter three nine. Verse eight to ten. Beloved, do not let this one thing escape your notice. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. Beloved, do not let this one thing escape your notice. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. The rain is Thank you, Father. Now, the Lord is not slow or slack. So some people may say, you know, Jesus is taking so long to come. Or um, it seems like, you know, six days to create the world is so little. How can you feel about the creation? He can do everything in like a blink. But especially this part where Jesus is taking so long to come. But the Bible says that a thousand days, a thousand years is like a day with the Lord. And a day like a thousand years. A thousand years like a day. Am I saying the same thing over again? Anyway, the Lord is not slow. So he know he 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 has spoken and he will do. He has spoken and he will do. So Father says, it may seem long to you, but for me. It's just about six more days. You know, six days have passed. So, so here's, here's what he says in verse 9 of Second Peter 3. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise as some understand slowness. You know, when some people are taking their precious time to do something and you know that, or, you know, they have other motives, or they're just, how to say, they're just idling. God is not idling. That is what he says. He, the Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some understand slowness, but is patient with you. Remember that fruit of the Spirit, patience? He said he's patient with you, not wanting anyone to what to perish but everyone to come to repentance that is father's he that is all he wants he desires no one to perish but all to come unto repentance and he says i'm um, in verse 10 now in case you thought i was talking out of my own mind with jesus coming he goes in verse 10 and he tells us now but the day of the Lord will come like a thief. Second Peter 3. The heavens will disappear with a roll. The elements will be dissolved in the fire. And the earth and its works will not be found. 
again. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roll, and the elements will be dissolved in the fire. So it's not water he's coming to deal with the earth. He's coming to deal with it with fire. And the earth and its works will not be found. Now, as he said in verse 9, he's not slow or slack concerning his promises. It's not like he's going to break his promise. And it's not that he's idling to bring his promise to pass. He is patient. With who? With us. Not wanting anyone to perish. But all to come unto repentance. For all of sin and for the short glory of God. All of righteousness are as filthy rats before him. So that same patience that he has, he wants us to have. And that is a fruit of the Spirit. Shall we read the fruits of the Spirit now? Galatians. This lady is ridiculously loud. Galatians 5. Verse 25. All right, so we're going from 19 to 25, really quickly. Now the works of the, the flesh are manifest, which are adultery. The first one is adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lavishness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, Rock, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revel revelings, and such like of which I tell you before, as I have told you in the past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace long suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affection and lust. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. So you know what the Bible says, be ye hearers? And doers, not just hearers, but doers also. So you, you don't just hear, but you do. James one twenty two. Give me from verse 21. Okay. James 1, 21 to 23, and it says, Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. Who's the engrafted word? Jesus. And what is the engrafted word? The word of God. But be doers of the word, verse 22 of James 1, and not hearers only deceiving yourselves, your own selves. Verse 23, for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass and then goes away. So it's like he's got, oh, let me see if I can, he's got something on his face and he looks in the mirror, mm-hmm, I was right here, uh-huh, and I, I just leave it and I go. That's, that's like one who's listening to the word, a hearer and not a doer. 
right? So you don't do something about it. When you behold yourself in the, the mirror that God gave you to say, hey, this is who God is. This is this is what he loves. So, yeah. All right, we're going into, um, we just read James. Going back into Acts one eleven now. So they're standing and they're staring up into the heavens. And Jesus, you know, he ascended. So. They were intently into the, they, look, they were looking intently into the sky. Acts 1, verse 10 to 12. As he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood before him. So beside him, so beside them, men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? The same Jesus, you don't, you all right? The balloon pop. I saw it blowing some of them. They were looking intently into the sky as he was going. When suddenly, two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, you, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you've seen him go into heaven. So Jesus is not just going to appear poof, on the earth and... You know, you'll see him walking in the mountains and by the rivers and, you know, like what is happening even today. You know the Russian Jesus? The um, There's a Russian Jesus, by the way. He claims to be Jesus, that he's come, and he has people following him. Come on, in the precious name of Jesus, right now. Why did it stop? Okay, so he he has people following him in the wilderness like disciples. Like if he is Jesus, um, there's a couple others. Now, here's what he says, verse 12. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives. Remember that? Which is near the city, a Sabbath day's journey away. Why did he say that? Why did he say it's near the city, a Sabbath day's journey away? A Sabbath day's journey away? Now, the Mount of Olives is the place where the olives are crushed. They fall and they crush. And remember, Jesus loved there. He loved to go there. And he would look at Jerusalem and just weep over her. And that's where he cried, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. I want long to gather you, but you will not come. He looked over Jerusalem and wept. Okay, so Luke 19 gives us a peek of him weeping. Because remember, he's father. He doesn't want any to perish, not even those who are broken up that we could be drafted in. So this is his marvelous plan, that for now they're blind, that we could see. So when we could see, then they will be allowed to see as well, okay? Jesus weeps over Jerusalem, Luke 19, verse 41 to 44. And he drew near and saw the city, and he wept over it, saying, Would that you, even you, had known this day, the things that make for peace. But now they're hidden from your eyes. Same thing as you're seeing. Verse 43. For the days will come upon you when your enemies will set up a barricade around you and surround you and hem you on every side, block you, and tear you down to the ground, you and your children within you. And they will not leave one stone upon the other in you. Because you did not know the time of your visitation. So Jerusalem rejected the visitation of God. He came to them. 
now. Wow. Whew. Okay. <laughs> ah, okay, so he came to his his people, he came to his children. Remember when he said, um, and who received it? Those who were willing to receive it. Even the Canaanites received it. Even the Samaritans received it. Now, remember the woman at the well? Remember the woman who came begging at the table? They weren't Jews. They weren't Hebrew people. But Jesus came to his people and they rejected him. So he said, verse 44 of Luke 19, And they will tear you down to the ground, you and your children within you. They will not leave one stone upon the other in you, because you did not know the time of your visitation. So, our scripture that we're looking at today is, I will come to you. I will not leave you as orphans. Remember that? I will not leave you. I will come to you. I will not leave you as orphans. So, when Jesus went back, when he went into heaven, and I mean, the apostles and the disciples, they stood gazing up like, wow, the Lord was with us, and now we're alone. But he gave them a command, because remember he said, wait, wait for me. He said, wait for me. And um, this was even as the outpouring of the Holy Spirit began to happen, and he began to reveal himself as he's in a glorified body, but he can eat. So he's showing me so many things right now. I do. Okay, wait. I'm going to have to put this in order. Okay, just a second. Scripture page. Here we go. So the first thing he was showing me was the, well, his resurrection, the coming of the Holy Spirit. So go into the upper room. And wait. But even before this, there were people who recognized him. So that's Acts 2 somewhere around there, right? Acts 1. Oh, okay, so it's Acts 1. So we're reading Acts. Okay, so he's lining up scripture now. So the first one we looked at was where he said they were looking at him going up into heaven and now we're looking at acts 11 to 15. the ring is coming back okay here we go acts 1 11 to 15. who also said men of galilee why do you stand staring up into heaven the same jesus who took who was taken up from you into heaven, will come back in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. And then they returned to Jerusalem from the Mount called Olives, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they had entered, they went up into the upper room where they were staying. I hear a child screaming or something. Peter... James, John, and Andrew. That's his inner circle right there. That's the first. That's his inner circle right there. Peter, James, John, John, and Andrew. Philip and Thomas. Bartholomew and Matthew. James, the son of Alphaeus. And Simon, the zealot. And Judas, the son of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication they continued in one accord in prayer and supplication with the woman and mary the mother of jesus and his brothers okay so they went remember he said go and wait okay i want that scripture wait for the promise now the upper room could also point us to the rooftop where it is looked at as a place of prayer amen 
So I have to find, he wants us, he wants us in a place of prayer. Now to come into prayer to the Lord, you come into, you come into a humbleness, a humility before the Lord. Luke 24, 48 to 50 gives us a peek and it says, you are witnesses of these things. And behold, I'm sending you, I'm sending, I'm sending you the prom, I'm sending the promise of my father upon you. I'm sending the promise of my spirit upon you. Check that. But remain in the city until you've been clothed with power from on high. When Jesus had led them all as far as Bethany, he lifted up his hands and he blessed them. And again, what happened? He was taken up, right? And while he was blessing them, he left them and was carried up into heaven. So you see, it's joining up. It's the same event joining up, okay? So, wow. Okay, a little bit overwhelmed. Okay, we're coming in here into Acts 1, 11 again. And it says, well, they returned to Jerusalem. Why? Because Jesus said to stay there until they received the promise. Now, he says, the promise of my Father. If we were to translate that, the promise of my Spirit. Um, Because he is God. Let me get that revelation. Now, Father says, I'll come to you. I'll not leave you orphans. So, I hear him saying they're like sheep without a shepherd. He had, he had compassion on them. They were like sheep without a shepherd. So this is why he even came. Because he is the shepherd and we're the sheep of his pastor. Matthew 9:36, he says, verse 35 to 37. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, all, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness. Verse 36. When he saw the crowds, he was moved with compassion for them. Because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Oh, that's one. He gave me two lines in one, in one verse. There we go. He was moved with compassion for them because he, they, they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. So then he said to the disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. So they're probably wondering, what is he on about, you know? But he said the harvest is plenty because he come to harvest souls. He's come to, remember, this is Father's business. It's all about souls and bringing souls to him that they could be saved and enter heaven. So he said the harvest is plenty. He saw the crowd. There were crowds that were helpless and harassed. Harassed by what? By demonic influence. By... Ah, every, every possible thing you could think, the system of the world, the tax collectors, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they said, you put, you make, you put heavy burdens on men's shoulders that they will not enter the kingdom of heaven, but neither do you enter. You place heavy loads on men's shoulders so that they do not enter the kingdom of heaven. Okay. Oof. I just felt kind of woozy. Okay. Matthew. Matthew 23. Verse 20. Matthew 23. 
verse 4. Let's check that out. Matthew 23, verse 4. So, remember when Jesus said, Come to me. There we go. Oh, that's, that's when he... Okay, I'm not going to get emotional or anything. Okay, just a second. So, we're going to read this first. So, Matthew 23, verse 4, he says, reading from verse 3, or 5, okay, and he says, All therefore, whatsoever they bid you, observe. Whatever they tell you, do it. But do not do as they do. And he says, and do it, but do not do after their works. For what they see, they do not do. They do not practice what they teach. And why? Ow. They bind heavy burdens and gr grievous to carry. And lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. So it's like the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the chief priests, teachers of the law, they, 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 they don't allow, like for example, Jesus came to heal the sick and they, they were forbidding him because it's the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. And he said, um, why am I talking about the Sabbath? Oh, right. Because, you know, that person was afflicted. But they were, here they were abusing the law of God to weigh down people. Not help people, but weigh down people. They lost the, they didn't have the insight that they could have with the resurrection of Christ. They didn't have the gift of the Holy Spirit. So Father says, I've come to you. You see me going away. And this is when I heard him say, like sheep without a shepherd. I'll come back to you. He said, it is expedient that I go away. So we're going to read that right now. Um, it is expedient that I go. Why? That the comforter would come. The what? The comforter. So, an orphan. Wow, Father. Wow, Father. Now, he said, no one having looked back, just a second. No one having set his, no one having set himself to the plow and looking back as fit for the kingdom. Luke nine sixty two. So what did he come to do? Did he come for peace? Did he come to join a family together like? A Hindu, a Muslim, a Christian, a Jew, did he come to bring all of them together in one merriment and say it doesn't matter how you worship, it's just one God you worship? Did he say for the gay man to live with the, the holy man and you know, it, and everybody just do go about doing their own thing? No. He said, do not suppose, do not think that I came to bring peace, I've not come to bring peace for the soul. Luke 9.62 tells us. In verse 61 to 62, still another said, I will follow you, Lord. But first, let me bid farewell to my family. And then Jesus declared, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. So when you leave your family, when you leave your families or your, you know, he says, I've come to set a mother against a daughter, father against a son. 
it's like that dividing factor and what would you end up wouldn't you end up open won't you end up um wouldn't you end up without a family wouldn't the world reject you so here's what father says wow okay <clears throat> Give me a second. He said, it is expedient that I go away, that the comforter would come. John 16, 7. John 16, verse 7, reading from verse 6 to 8. Here's what he says. But because I've said these things to you, sorrow is fill your heart. So he knows exactly. Remember the word of God is sharp. It can it can divide. It, it can rightly divide. It knows. He knows. He knows our hearts. He knows our thoughts. That's why I say, search me, O Lord, and see if I'm found in wanting. And anything that is not of you, take it away from me. Okay, the mosquitoes are coming out. Here's what he says in John 16, verse 5 to 8. Now I, but now I go my way to him that sent me, and none of you ask me where I'm going. So he's still operating as the sun. And he's showing them that he has to leave the physical embodiment, the, the, the physical earth, and go back to the heavenly or the spiritual realm so they won't see him anymore. But because I've said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. And he says, <clears throat> John 16, 7, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. It's good for you that I go away. Because if they constantly saw him, if he see, if if he had stick, stuck around, right, they would have, he would have, their faith would not have increased. And God, that's what God wants. He wants us to be aware of the spiritual realm, of the the, the part. Remember, God is spirit, and they who worship him was worshiping the spirit and truth. So it's an awakening to their spirit. So he says, it's expedient for you that I go away. For I go not away. If I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. Okay, so nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It's expedient for you that I go away. For if I do not go away, the comforter will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Father is such a loving God. He is. He's just precious. <laughs> he, he, he knew that as God on the throne in heaven, a lot of people didn't believe in him. Even his own people didn't believe in him. He knew. Okay? He knew that even, even so, he loved them. And even though they didn't believe, he wanted them to believe. So what did he do? He came down and he went on the cross. That they could see him and then of course when he picked up peter and andrew in this uh, as fishermen and gave them a deeper purpose to their life one that they they could have never imagined i'm sure he people didn't receive him so he couldn't embrace them but now he's telling them i must go away that the comforter will come so the comforter and he's teaching them that it's the Holy Spirit and when he comes he'll teach you all things and he'll comfort you and he'll guide you when he'll you know all things so what father couldn't do before before he came as Jesus now he can do so he in essence he he brought them to him just like he's doing to us so that he can embrace us and we'll embrace him we won't push his embrace away we won't despise his instruction or his reproof or you know the things that he shows us as spirit 
Yeah? Father, you're so loving. He is. He's, he's really, he's just, you're amazing, Papa. And here's what he says. Nevertheless, I tell you, so this is John 16, verse 7, I tell you the truth, that it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Comforter will not come to you. But if I depart, I'll send him on to you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin. So who are convicted by the Holy Spirit? Sinners. And who are sinners? We all sinners. So what does he come to do? He comes to reprove, to teach and correct. And what does the Bible say about the Word of God? That it is given by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Let's find out here. Okay, so he says in Timothy somewhere, Second Timothy, I think. We'll see right here what he says. Second Timothy three, sixteen to seventeen. And he says, reading from verse 15 to 18, or 17 would be, okay, let's see. And he says in 2 Timothy 3, 15 to 17, now Jesus became their father. He is their father. He's following them, right? Um, they're following him. Sorry. So he's their father. So when he went away, now what? Now they felt abandoned, kind of. And that's what orphans are. Orphans, they, they don't have peers. They don't have family. They have nobody to rely on. But he, he does an adoption. So he's going to sign the adoption papers and come to them. Okay? Come to us. Here we go. 2 Timothy 3, verse 15 to 17, and says, And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture, verse 16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect thoroughly furnished unto all good works see that okay and then so we're looking at him now he's saying the comforter will come and this is these are the things that he will do and like last night when he convicted me of this thing and you know to share it out go speak it he said because there's so many who are resisting the voice of the holy spirit to go their own path and it's blaspheming the holy ghost so which is the unpardonable sin okay so we looked at no one having put his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of heaven so that's what they did so they forsook all others they forsook their families their friends their uh, whoever whatever life they had known in the world they forsook it and they were following jesus now in a straight and narrow path so he is father at least this is how they they knew him you know as teacher They knew him as teacher. And um, just a second, okay, just give me a second. They knew him as teacher and as father. And remember when he said, if I, guess what he says? Philip said, Lord, show us the father and it will be enough for us. I wanted to get some water and make my shake. <laughs> Added to the ice cream. Um, here we go. So, show us the Father, and it will be enough for us. Remember when he said that? Remember when he also said, um, who did he say to us? Timothy? Mm -mm. Thomas. Oh, Timothy. Oh. I don't remember. Okay, we'll go. 
John 14, 8. Philip, Philip, verse 7 to, to 9. Now, he said two things. What, what was the other thing I said just now? If I am Father, where is my honor? Not saying God, I think. Mm. John 14, 8. And it says, If you had known me, verse 7, If you had known me, known me, eyes open, remember that? Remember, um, we heard him saying they were sad in their hearts, so we're going there after here. Just a second. Okay, we're going there after here. If you had known me, you would know my father as well. If you had known me, if you had known the spirit that I operate, you would know the father. Listen, from now on, you know him and have seen him. What did you just say there? Verse 8 of John 14. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the father and that will be enough for us. And Jesus replied, Philip, I have been with you all this time and still you do not know me? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Take that in for two seconds. Okay, so now we're going back into where he said, they were sorrowful in their hearts. They were sad, they were sad. The disciples were sad. In Luke 24, straight on from 16 to 32. Okay, I'm going to read it with you and then we're going to get the gist of this. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And verse 17 of Luke 24, he asked them, What are you discussing so intently as you walk along? And they stood still with sadness on their faces. Verse 18, one of them named Cleopas, Cleopas, I hope I said that right, asked him, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that happened here in these recent days? And they began to tell him exactly what happened and how Jesus was crucified and he resurrected and Jesus is actually listening to them. Father is listening to them and he's like, <laughs> and then, he began to explain to them the scriptures, and their eyes were opened. If we read all the way down, we're going to Luke 24, verse 31 to 33. Luke 31 to 33 tells us exactly that when he was finished explaining the scriptures to them, their eyes were open, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. What does he want? Us to be aware of the spiritual. He wants us to worship him in spirit and in truth. So he gave them the truth, and now they saw him. Now they knew him. Their spirit man was awakened. And he vanished out of their sight. In verse 32 of Luke 24, And they said to one another, Did not our heart burn within us? while he talked with us by the way and while he opened to us the scriptures and they rose up the same hour and returned to jerusalem and found the eleven the eleven gathered together and them that were with them why because they were scared they they were now like well we walk with jesus everywhere and now we're hated everywhere now jesus is not with us so what are we to do and they were deciding should i go and fish or should should i go back to what, what should I do? So they were gathered in prayer. And of course, what happened? If we read a little bit more, Jesus appeared unto them. Okay, so just give me a second. They're heating my feet. If I spray, I'm going to be stifling.
Okay. So Luke 24 gives us a full, I think we should read it. Should we read it? We should read it. Okay, we're going to read it. We're going to read Luke 24 from verse 16 onwards. I just lost Luke. Where is Luke? I never said 33. I said Luke. Give me all of Luke. Luke 24. So I could choose what I want from the whole thing instead of you taking a year to flip the page. Here we go. Luke 24. Reading from verse 16. Okay, from verse 15. You ready? So Father has gone back up in heaven. So they can't see him now. But now that they have some of the things that he told them, now that he's been with them, they're kind of awakened inside. So listen. Verse 15. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near. Jesus himself is coming <laughs> and went with them. But their eyes were were holding that they should know him. Verse 17. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that you have with one another as you walk and you're sad? One of them, called Cleopas, answered unto him, thou, Art thou the only stranger in Jerusalem who has not known the things that have come to pass in these days? And he began to tell them what things, and he said unto him concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. And how the chief priests and all our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that it but we trusted that it had been he who would have redeemed Israel. They trusted that it was he who had come to save Israel, the Messiah. And it says, today is the third day since these things have happened. Yea, and certain women who also were accompanying made us astonished, which were early at the sepulcher. So they are like, they are just, they are overwhelmed. So this is when Mary and, and um, who were the women that went to see him at the grave? They went to anoint his body and they didn't find anything and any angels and all that. So... It says, and certain women of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulchre, the grave. And then when they found out his body, they came saying that they had seen vision of angels, which said he is alive. And then certain of them, which were with us, went to the sepulchre. He didn't give names. You see, he's not giving names. He doesn't know that Jesus is walking with them. So here's what he said. And and found it even so, as the woman had said, but they saw him not. And verse 25, and he said unto them, O fools, and so hard to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? Remember he said, you remember when he was teaching them, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who went to a far country to lay hold of his kingship. Okay, so he says, um, <clears throat> beginning at Moses, he started at Moses, beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. So he began to teach them of the Passover and uh, every other thing that, the, that no, no bone on him would be broken and he would rise to life and every single thing concerning the Christ, the coming of the Messiah, he began to teach again. And as they drew nigh unto the village, whether they went, he made as though they would have, he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us. So he pretended not to go with them. And he said, Abide with us. Why? He wanted to hear if, if these things they sunk in, and they did. He said, abide with us, for it is towards evening, and days far spent. That's not why they wanted him to go with them. 
their spirit man was awakened. Hear what he's saying. They constrained him, abide with us, for it is towards the evening and days fast wind. And he went in and tarried with them, tarried with them. And it came to pass, he sat at meat with them and took bread and blessed it. Jesus ate meat people, all people who don't want to eat meat and are saying vegeta vegetables. Again, he sat at meat with them, M-E-A-T, and took bread and blessed it and brick and gave them. He loved fish, by the way. And their eyes were opened. Break bread. And they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. Verse 32. <laughs> Could you imagine how, he, how they felt? <clears throat> Could you imagine how they felt? When he was walking with them on the road, and they didn't know him. And then they realized that their father was teaching them. And their eyes were open and they knew him. Verse um, verse 31, <clears throat> their eyes were open and they knew him. And he vanished out of their sight. And they said to one another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way? And while he opened to us the scriptures? And they arose up, they rose up that very same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together and them, them that were with them and saying, the Lord has risen indeed and has appeared unto Simon. Simon. His name was still Simon. Now this is a revelation and maybe I should do this another time. But Simon's name means sand. You know, if you clump sand together, it'll pull apart. It won't get for a while, but it'll, it'll just fall apart. Sand needs something to hold it together. So Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. He says, I'm the living water. When he changed Simon's name to Petros, which is rock, he made him firm. So his name is still Simon here. And he says, indeed, the Lord, here we go. The Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. And they told what things were done in the way and how he was known of them in breaking of bread. Remember he said, this is my body that is broken for you. Take and eat. Remember at the last supper? So now they're beginning to like get the revelation and it is so overwhelming. And I'm so joyful. And they are just, could you imagine? And <clears throat> Father, he, he wants to love on all his children. So here's what happens. Verse 36. And as they spoke, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said unto them, Peace unto you. That's exactly what he said to me on the, the 22nd of October, 2012. At two o'clock in the evening, <laughs> he said, peace unto you. But they were terrified. They were terrified and frightened and supposed that they had seen a ghost, a spirit. And he said to them, why are you troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? So they kind of for a moment, they're shaking out. They're really there. They, they are scared out of their skins. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Remember, God can judge your thoughts and he knows what's in your heart. Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit has not flesh and bones as ye see me have. I hear him saying, as he is, we will be. So I'm going there. Wow. Okay, this is beautiful, isn't it? Revelation. He's just a beautiful father. He's a good, good father. Okay. First John 3, 2. I'm 
so good. Verse 1 to 3. And he says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called the children of God. So he didn't just, um, just give me a sec, okay? He didn't just, um, he didn't just show himself to Peter and Cleopas, or, or to Peter, because remember Peter was at a table with him, right? So he didn't just show himself to Simon. He didn't show himself just to um, a few. He showed himself to, to who? All of them. He's a good father. He's a loving father. He wants to lavish on us the things that he's come to give us. And one of those things is the greatest joy in knowing that he has risen and of course so could you could you see this right now so peter and cleopas whoever cleopas is okay peter well simon who should i see should i say simon or should i say peter peter is or, or simon whatever he is he is now he's anxious so he's He's sharing with them, you know, we were walking on the road and the Lord appeared to us. And he's like, he's sharing with them the good news. And they're like, well, they're, they're taking it in. And he said, he did say that he would rise again. Listen. And then all of a sudden Jesus appears. Could you, could you just picture yourself in that room right now? Could you? Picture yourself in the room with the disciples as Jesus makes himself known. The very next thing I hear is, as he is, we shall be. And he says in 1 John 3, 1 to 3, Behold, what manner of love the Father has given to us, that he would come and he would teach us. And he would dwell amongst us. And he would die for us. And he would give his spirit to us. He would adopt us. So we were made orphans by the world. The world abandoned us. Everything that we knew abandoned us. And then we were adopted through his Holy Spirit. So we're going there as well. Isn't this beautiful? I love when he just, he, he just gently reveals himself. Okay, so here we go. And it says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called the children of God, that this, and that, and that, this what we are, and that this is what we are, women, and that this is what we are, children of God. The reason the world does not know us is because it did not know him. Father, let your Holy Spirit fire surge through this atmosphere right now. Right now. Yes, Lord. Okay, so here's what he says. Now, what manner of love the Father has given to us that we should be called the children of God. And this is what we are the reason the world does not know us is because it did not know him it didn't know the spirit of truth so how could it know when we're walking by the spirit of truth is it going to recognize us no it's going to hate us beloved we are now children of god and what we will be this is what i heard in the spirit we just as he is we will be like him okay beloved we are now children of god and what we will be has not yet been revealed we know that when Christ appears, we will be like Him. So what we will be has not been revealed yet. We're not in our glorified body yet. We're walking in the spirit of our Father. Hi, Brother Aaron. God bless you, brother. I love you, brother. Here's what he's saying. We're walking by the Spirit of God, but we're not transformed yet. Because the Bible says, incorruptible. 
corruption was put on incorruption, and immortal was put on immortality. So it's not yet been revealed. We know that when Christ appears, we'll be like him, for we will see him as he is. So now we go back into the scripture that we're reading in Luke 24, and he sees, so, so Simon is excited, so I'm like, oh, the Lord, the Lord is risen, he, he's alive and he's well, and, and we saw him, and he's, he's just, he says, he's just, it's father, brother, he says, he's just, you know, he was walking with us on the road and we didn't recognize him at first, when we broke bread, our eyes were open. Because this is the bread of the new covenant. This is the perfect, this is the sacrifice. This is where he says, I've come to bring sight to the blind. Amen. So we're going to go there in a little while. I'm um, just trying to remember that. Luke, Luke 24, verse 39. He says, Behold, my hands, behold my hands. That it is I, myself, handle me. He says, handle me and see. For a spirit has not flesh and bones as ye see me have. As we see him, we shall be. So he he's in his glorified body. Verse 40, and when he had thus spoken, he showed him his hands and his feet where he was pierced. And while they believed not for joy and wandered, he said to them, Have ye here any meat? And they gave him a piece of boiled fish and of an honeycomb. And he took it and did eat before them so that he could see that, hey, he's eating. A spirit can't eat. It's supposed to fall, fall through like Caspar. <laughs> um, verse 43. He took it and he did eat it before them. Verse 44. And then he said unto them, These are the words which I speak to you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which was written, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. So, and those were the things, the Passover, he being the rock, the, the cross was, was opened unto us at the, um, even the, the, making the bitter water sweet. Um, the, the rock that gave the water was he. Everything everything that was said in the law and the prophets, well, in the law of Moses and the prophets, um, that is the sacrificial things even, especially the sacrificial things, the sacrificial lamb, the sin offering, and all of that. This is what Jesus, this is what Jesus is. Verse 45, then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. And he said unto them, thus it is written, thus it is behoved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. He was reminding me, remember when he said, in three days, um, throw down this temple and in three days I'll build it up again. And they said, it took 40 something years to build this temple and you're going to throw it out, you're going to build it up in three days. Um, you know, they were thinking a literal temple because again, their eyes were closed. So now we're going, we're going to read, and he said unto them, thus it is written, thus it is behoved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, that repentance and remissions of sins should be preached in his name among the nations beginning at jerusalem so we're jerusalem and ye are witnesses of these things so well wow i have a, a few scriptures here to go into when i think where are we go adoption by his holy spirit was i not typing just now i hope i was typing I was typing, wasn't I? I wasn't typing, was I? I was just talking. I could have sworn I was typing. I was not typing. Sorry. 
Okay, um, I'm gonna try and get all of this. So now listen, they've received, so Father came and he showed them all these things that were, you know, they were new to them, but some, some they didn't understand. So remember when, remember when he said, um, he said to Peter, unless I wash you, you will have no fight in me. But um, Peter said, no, don't wash me. And remember when he said unless i wash you you'll have no part in me and peter said lord in that case wash my hands and my head also so <laughs> peter wanted a whole bath he wanted a whole bath because he did not yet understand right so father's laughing by the way father's laughing um but this is not what he meant he meant wash him by the blood amen so we're looking at Romans 8, 14 to 16. And here's where he says, verse 14 to 16, Romans 8. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. So the scriptures, they are the word of God. Their spirit and their life. And they have the power to open the eyes of the blind. Because they speak of the one who is the living word this word made manifest amen this word that dwelt in the, in flesh that he may bring us unto heaven so let's read in romans 8 14 to 16 for all who are led by the spirit of god are sons of god for you do not receive a spirit of slavery that returns you to fear but you receive the spirit of sonship somebody say a royalty by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. So could you imagine, Philip? Lord, show us the Father. He's looking at Jesus, okay? Lord, show us the Father and it will be enough for us. Philip, I've been with you all this time. And yet you, you haven't known me? From now on, he who has seen me has seen the Father. And some people, they, they water it down and they assume, well, Jesus was doing the work of the Father. Yes, he was, of course. He was demonstrating how Son of God is supposed to be. Flesh submitted to only Spirit. Submitted to Spirit. Sovereign Spirit. Amen? So Philip, might, his eyes might have popped open. I don't know. There's another account with either, it starts with T. It's either Timothy or Thomas. And he cries in his arms. Um, okay, so let me try and remember what I was saying before. Okay, right. So he's come to give sight to the blind. That's one. The Spirit of the Lord is upon him. Yeshua Huadon. Come on. Luke 4, verse 18. When we sit on the Sabbath and you open up the scriptures and he began to read. Okay. That's healing time. All who got it receive healing. Yay. Father loves to work on the Sabbath, by the way. Kingdom work. Here we go. Luke 4. Verse 17 to 19, and says, The scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Oh, this is it. <laughs> Unrolling it, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he's anointed me to preach good news to the poor, that they may become rich. Rich in what? Rich in his love. Rich in his word. Rich in his spirit. Oh, just fill up with that gold. That pure gold refined by fire. Revelation 3, amen? And he says, He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim deliverance to the captives. Even so, as we preach good news to the poor, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the chief priests and all of them, they were, they were shutting up the gates of heaven into the faces of the poor. 
They didn't want them to see. So here's what he says. He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim deliverance to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to release the oppressed and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. The year of the Lord's favor. Because that was the that was the time that he came to die. He came. Messiah. Messiah has come. Now you have peace in him. Peace I give you. I give not as the world gives, but I give. And safety that is his angels encounter around you. His fire fills you up. His you have a place. Your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. So could you imagine? I, I wish I could just find it here right now with um I think it's um it's some in John twenty eight. Ah oh, father. I'm trying not to I'm trying not to cry. Okay, John twenty twenty eight. Verse 27 to 29. This one's hard. This one's hard because Thomas is doubting Thomas. Everybody knows he's doubting Thomas. You know, he's always, is it real? Is it real? Is it so? Is it? So, 26. Verse 26 of John 20 and it says eight days later his disciples were once again inside with the doors locked Thomas was with them Jesus came and stood among them and said peace be with you and then he said and then Jesus said to Thomas put your finger here and look at my hand and reach out your hand and put it in my side Stop doubting and believe. So Thomas was like, Is that really him? Is that couldn't be what if it's a ghost? What if you're wrong? And you know, Thomas is, is, is really going at it. And Thomas replied. That was hard. He he put he put his hand in the piercing of Jesus. Um he put his finger and then he put it he put it maybe in his his heart where they they um they speared and Thomas replied my lord and my god let me read that again verse 27 29 and Jesus said to Thomas of John 20 put your finger here and look at my hands reach out your hand and put it into my side stop doubting and believe Thomas replied my lord and my god verse 29 and Jesus said to him, because you've seen me, you've believed. Ouch. You didn't believe me before you could touch me. You didn't believe me before you could see me. Because you've seen me, you've believed. Blessed are those who have not yet seen and yet have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Amen. So, um, they were fortunate to to witness these things, to even even to see him. But could you imagine? Thomas had to put his hands in his piercings and in his side to believe. It's hard. Now. I heard him saying in the spirit, I'm your father, where's my honor? And I'm your master, where's my respect? So, he's saying, I'm your father, if I'm your father. So we have to, we have to give God the glory, amen? He says, I will come to you, I won't leave you alone, I'm with you. Okay, so we're going into Malachi. One. Just 
Timmy verse 5 to 7. And verse 5 to 7 of Malachi 1. Here we go. You will see it with your own eyes. You will see, great is the Lord, beyond, even beyond the borders of Israel. What is he talking about? The Gentiles. Shut up again. Okay. He says, you will see it, you will you will see it with your own eyes and see great is the Lord, even beyond the borders of Israel. What? The Gentiles. The fullness of the Gentiles. He is doing a new thing, a good thing. The first shall be last and the last first. Now Israel, as in the land of Israel, is God's chosen people. Well, right now they're blinded because they refuse to believe that he came. So the Gentiles are the one that is receiving the fullness of the Spirit. That they have not seen and they're believing. Now, these are broken up that we will be grafted in. And when we have come, when the fullness of the Gentiles has come in, when Father has sealed up all that are his, then Israel is going to see them. Malachi 1, 6. A son honors his father and a slave his master. If I am a father, where is honor due to me? So today, his voice is calling in the spirit and he says, You call me father? Today you're getting that revelation of who I am. You call me father. And even if you know I'm father, are you bringing me honor? Are you respecting me? A master lays down roots. You got a job description. Are you doing it? Where is the respect due to me? So he says in Malachi 1 verse 6, A son honors his father, honors his father, and a slave his master. If I'm father, where is my honor due to me? And if I'm a master, where is the respect due to me, says the Lord Almighty. It is you, priests, who show contempt for my name. What did he say? Who is showing contempt for his name? The priests. And he says, but you ask, how have we shown contempt for your name? He said, you brought me. He said, by offering the fire food on my altar. The fire food? What do you mean? Now, you're laying down the lamb on the altar, but is your heart clean? You're, you're bringing offerings to God, but have you reconciled with your enemy? The Bible says, make haste to agree or to... Yeah, to, I don't know what it said, yeah, on the way to the, the judge, make, make haste to agree with your adversary until, on, while you are on your way to the judge, time is yet. And even those who have not believed that Jesus has come. Now they're laying the lamb on the altar. The fat is burning and the Lord loves it. He loves the sin. But it's the hard why? Because they shut up the kingdom of heaven into the faces of men that they cannot see and neither do themselves enter. So Father says, where is my honor and where is my respect? He says, it's okay. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. But first, the fullness of the Gentiles will come in. Because he said, blessed are they who have not seen and yet believed. Amen. So, the first is last and the last is first. Now, remember when he said, um, what was I saying just now? They shut up the kingdom of heaven. Okay, so here we go. Matthew 23, verse 13. So we're reading verse 12 to... 15. 12 to 15, okay? And he says, For whoever exalts himself will be humbled. And what is the Pharisees and the Sadducees doing? 
what do the teachers have to know and the chief priest they're doing? Ah, they're not doing good, are they? They are. They just want the pleasing of men. They want the glory of of God to fall on them. Here's what it's saying. Wolves. Wow. Now, if they were doing it for a righteous purpose, God would have allowed their eyes to be open. But here's what He says in Matthew 23, 12. Here, come on, because stop holding right now. Okay, so it says, For whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Verse 13. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You shut up the kingdom of heaven in men's faces. You yourselves do not enter. And no will you let in those who wish to enter. So people are, are making list upon list for people to enter into the kingdom of heaven. When Jesus said, I am he. Father has come. And Father has taken away all the burdens. He said, you shut up the kingdom of heaven in men's faces. What is he come to do? Preach to the poor because they're withholding those who could afford the sacrifices. So the sin offerings, the burnt offerings, and they carry it. Those who couldn't, they could do a bird or a dog. And they were increasing the prices and making his, his house of prayer into a den of thieves. And... Right, so he made the, the loads burdensome. You rob widows' houses and orphans. Father said, fear not. I will come to you. I'll not leave you orphans. I'll not leave you deserted. I'll come to you. And so he says, if it's expedient that I go away, the comfort will come. So now, when well, you couldn't receive me before, when I embrace you, now you receive me because I told you the comfort will come and you can't receive him. He's a good, it's a good thing. So, and then the guide and the teacher, what you couldn't understand before, the spirit will give you understanding. So when I spoke to you as father, a sovereign, sovereign spirit of the universe, oh, you didn't understand. But now when I speak to you, you will remember the things that I told you when I walked with you. Now that now that I can come and teach you what was given in the scriptures. So now they can't make your burdens heavy anymore. Your burdens are light. And I've done it because I'm thought and I love you. And I want you in my kingdom. I've given you this thing called grace. So here we go now. And Jesus cries. He cries and he says, Come. Father's arms open wide. He comes into the world and he says, Come, come just as you are. He says, Come unto me, all who labor and are heavy laden. Matthew 11, verse 27 to 31. And it says, Come unto me, amen. Matthew 11, verse 27 to 31. All things have been committed to me by my father. So he, he's saying, hey, I have, I have the authority. No one knows the son except the father. And no one knows the father except the son. And those whom the son chooses to reveal him. No one knows the son except the father. The spirit knows who are his. God knows those who are his. My sheep hear the sound of my voice, and they come. Amen. And he says, and no one knows the Father except the Son. The flesh that is submitted to the Word of God knows the Spirit, because my Word is Spirit and Truth. Here's what he says, and to those whom the Son chooses to reveal him. The Son is Jesus. Jesus is the Son. So when you come to Jesus, He will reveal, he will reveal who the Father is. Okay? So 
Just like Philip. Philip wanted to, Philip got it. Thomas wanted to, Thomas got it. Okay, verse 28 of Matthew 11. It says, Come to me. His arms are like just like wide open. And he says, Come to me. Are you tired? Are you tired of this and that and the other? Are you tired of their systems? Are you tired of the things that they're doing to the authority from the kingdom of heaven? He says, Come to me. All who are weary and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. So remember the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes and all the uppity, they're laying loads upon people. You can't get this blessing until you put $1,500 there for a sacrificial offering. Sell your house and your car and bring it to the church. Come on. You want this blessing? You have to do this. Now, sometimes it's a test. But sometimes it's ridiculousness. Unless you are under a spiritual covering by your spiritual father. Well, who is my spiritual father? Shall we examine this? God is my spiritual father. God. God Almighty. The great I am, Jesus Christ in the flesh, is my spiritual father. What nonsense are you telling me? Okay, come on. We're going a little bit deeper. Again, we don't do we don't do sugar coated preaching here. Here we go. And he says, Come unto me, all who are weary and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. What does that mean, take my yoke upon you? The truth. Walk in truth and in love. That's all he requires. Walk in truth and in love. Because he's the truth. And if you're walking in him, then you're on the right path. And he is eternal life. So when you've got the truth, you've got the way and life. And when you've got love, and you've got a spirit dwelling in you, working in you. See how that works? It says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart. You will find rest for your souls. The way that he teaches is so gentle. It's so loving. It's so, it's working things for righteousness. At the end of it, you're going to see a beautiful revelation. You're going to see a beautiful purpose. Um, your, your eyes are going to be opened. Amen? Father says, For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Amen? So Father calls us to pick up the cross and walk with it. Pick up the truth and walk with it. And walk in love. Okay. So now we're going into, well, we just read, you place heavy loads on men's shoulders, you know, that's just terrible. Um, give me a second. Right. We read also that he had compassion for these people. Um, let's read Mark 8, 2, verse 1 to 3. In those days, the crowds, the crowd once again became very large. They had nothing to eat. Jesus called the disciples to him and said, I hear him saying, <laughs> I won't give you a stone if you ask for bread. And I won't give you a scorpion if you ask for fish. Okay, so here's what he said. In those days, the crowd once again became very large. And they had nothing to eat. It by us without the Holy Spirit. The word was planted, and now the living water has come to nourish the seed that it would grow into a beautiful tree planted by the waters and then bring forth fruits that will last. Amen. Do you feel that? Wow. Okay, Mark 8, verse 1 to 3. In those days, the crowd once again became very large, and they had nothing to eat. I have compassion for these people because they have been with me 
They have already been with me three days and have had nothing to eat. They were fasting. You could be so filled up on the word that you, you don't eat for three days and have nothing to eat. If I send them home hungry, they'll faint along the way. Father is concerned. He is so loving and kind and just beautiful that he will not send them home hungry. He says, if they, if they, look how lovely he says it. He says, if they go like they are, they're famished. They're going to faint along the way. He says, if I send them home hungry, a parent always loves on the kid. They are concerned. He says, if I send them home hungry, they will faint along the way. Does father want that? No. He says, for some have some great come a great distance. Even though, even though, even in the spirit, he's he's giving a little bit of a spirit nugget. He's saying, even as you have journeyed through life unto this point, even as you have journeyed, the journey that you've taken, he says you'll not go back empty-handed. It will all be worth it. You're not going back empty-handed, but he'll fill you up. He'll make sure that you have enough to go with, that it can sustain you till your journey ends, till you're back home. Oh my goodness, till you're back home. He'll make sure that the journey that you go through is not for nothing, it's not in vain. But he'll fill you up till you have enough, till you're satisfied. And he came to give life, my heart abundantly, amen? Till you're satisfied. And he'll make sure that you have enough to take you till you, you arrive back home. And this home that I'm talking about is heaven. Amen? He's come to fill us up. Father's come to feed us. Now, that was beautiful, wasn't it? Now, the very next thing I heard, how am I going to mark this? I didn't know how to mark this. Okay, so we'll just remember a mark eight, okay? Let me just type in. Which one of you? Which one of you? If he asks for bread, his father will get stoned. So Matthew um, 7, 9 tells us, well, that's what I heard in the spirit, stone for bread and, and um, scorpion for fish. So check it. So Matthew 7, 9, and it says, for everyone who asks, receives. Remember that was the very beginning. He says, if you want wisdom, ask and he gives it freely he says matthew 7 verse 8 to 10 for everyone who asks receives yes son because fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom okay he who seeks finds and to him who knocks the door will be opened which of you if his son asks for bread will give him a stone or if he asks for a fish, give him a snake. <clears throat> and he says here, verse 11 of Matthew 7. So if you who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good things to those who ask? Amen. So he's come to make manifest these things that we ask now. So, Father says that it's not by might, nor by strength, but by my spirit, says the Lord. He says, my word will not go forth and return void. You know, that's why when we speak things, it happens. Now, you realize the heavy rain stopped falling? When I cried out, God of Elijah, didn't he answer? He did, he answered. And, I mean... We've got some more praying to do because I think we have a storm coming. Um, we're gonna turn it away, just like Brett. It's gonna turn away. So, but I was also hesitant in that because the sun was so hot, 
there are farmers out there whose crops are dying. So Father has also watered their crops and just revived them. Okay? So Father says, I've come to give you all good things. He says, fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good will to give you the kingdom. And when he said that, he said, fear not, little flock. Luke, um, Luke 12, verse 32. Am I alone up here? I am. No, I'm not. My father shared with me. Luke 12, verse 31 to 33. This is my lunch today. I'm not hungry. I'm just like, I'm feeding here. <laughs> um, verse 31, Luke 12, 31 to 33. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God. Ah, because that's where whom is. And all these things shall be added unto you. Now, if you're a son of God, then this is what your mind and your heart will be on. You'll live it, eat it, sleep it, bathe it, night and day, day and night. It is on your mind. Because why? It's in your heart because he is in your heart. Because your father's glory is 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 your purpose you you live to bring him glory amen and you're standing in one accord with him and he's concerned about the perishing of souls so he wants to bring all souls into kingdom so it says in 12 30, 31 to 33 let's wrap it up now but rather seek ye the kingdom of god and all these things shall be added to you fear not little flock for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell what you have and give alms. Provide yourselves baths with wax not old. Alignment. 4.44 p.m. <laughs> Amen. And he says, go into all the world and preach. Alignment. 020202. Check it out. Okay. So Father says, I want to give you the kingdom. I'm here to give you all good things. It is his desire. You know that song? This is my desire to honor you. So this is what the son does for the father. Remember when he said, glorify your name, father? He said, I've glorified it. And I will glorify it again. Amen. So he'll glorify it through us. Yay. So as Jesus is, we will be. Amen. So I'm using Jesus as in the name he operates in under, the Lord our salvation, the Lord our Savior. Amen. Father says, I won't leave you orphans. I won't abandon you. I'll come to you. Because I love you. Because I desire nobody to perish, but all to come unto repentance. I'll come to you. And come he has. Amen. He hasn't come in the cause of glory for us to see him crowned as the Father. But he's come. He's come as the Holy Spirit, as the comforter, as the teacher, as the guide. He's come as the one who gives peace in all circumstances and situations. He's come as the one who, who increases our knowledge, who makes things manifest out of the word. He brings it forth before our eyes. He's come as the the seal of God, for which we are sealed with for the day of redemption. Indeed, He has come. Woo! <laughs> yes! Yes! Come on, how can you not shout? I know some people are shouting right now. He has come. Father has come, even so. And it's the third time He's coming again. Because He came as the baby in the manger. He went back, that is, He died. And he was risen, and he came back as a holy comforter. And now he's coming again as the Father. He's coming in the glory of the Father. Amen. So beloved, Father has not abandoned you. He's not abandoned us. He's come, and even so, he's coming again. And he's. He's, he's, come to feed, he's, he's come to feed us, and we are fed, and we're feeding dear. Amen? So don't take these words for granted. Share them. Share them. Help another soul. And 
He's come to feed us that it will be enough for the journey back home. Amen. Father, he loves us and cares. He cares so much. He says, cast your cares on me. I care for you. I care for you. His, his love is overwhelming. His grace is sufficient and his peace surpasses every understanding. His Holy Spirit is the ultimate, it's the power of God. And we have all of them. We have enough because he is enough. People of it. Let's thank God for this word because he has come and he's adopted us. Oh, we have one more scripture. Did we read it? Through the adoption of the Holy Spirit? Did we read it? I think we read it. Did we read it? I didn't even do the, did I do the, um, the scripture that we believe? No. Okay. We have time. We have 10 minutes. I can still do it. We're not locking off yet. <laughs> okay. So he says in Romans, oh, we did read it. Yes. Romans 8, 15. We did read it. And then he said, we have sonship. Yeah. Until we, until we cry, Abba Father. Okay. Um, uh, okay. Something's irritating my nose again. Okay. So, um. Where are we going? Oh, the very verse that we started with. Um, I will come to you. I will not leave you open. There are people who hold you. John 14, 18. Oh, this was lovely, wasn't it? Wasn't this just beautiful? Now he says, even, verse, John 14, verse 17 to 19, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because they see him not, they know him not. But you know him, for he dwells with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yea, in a little while, and the world see me no more. But you will see me, because I live. Ye shall live also. Amen. So Father says, what in the world? Father says, they can't receive what we have, the car is I don't know what is bothering my nose. Oh my gosh. Stop. Father says, I'm almost done. <laughs> Father says, they can't see me, but you can. They can't see me, but you can. You will see me. Because I live, you shall live also. Remember he says, even though he dies, he shall live. Remember when he said that? Remember he said, um, greater things than these you will do. Because as the world has need, Father is the need met. Amen. So I want, just give me one second. John 4, 14, 18. Did I read the King James Version? He said, I'll not leave you orphans. I will come to you. I will come to you. I'll not leave you comfortless. I am the comforter. I've come to you. And I'll never leave you or forsake you. I'm with you to the ends of the earth. Amen. So, Father, he came to fill us up and just to be with us, to do all things through us, that we would shine his light onto a dying world that all souls would come into the kingdom and be saved. And because he's come, we can receive all of this. It is what it is. It's happiness. Let's just thank Father right now. Amen. Father, Abba Jesus, we just come before you, Father. Just bow down so humble, so grateful. 
just so in love with you. So in love with you and adoring you. I'm just speechless, Father. That you did not abandon us. That you did not forsake us. You did not leave us comfortless. But you came to us. You came to us that we would have a teacher and a comfort and a guide, Father. And even the one who's doing the work in us and through us. It's you who is at work in us, just quickening us to the glory of you, Father. That we could shine your light into a dying world, Father. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming in the third time that you're coming again. Even so, we say the second time that you're coming. But the third time that you're coming, <laughs> that you're coming that we can see you glorified in the way that you deserve. Wearing many crowns and just... In the glory of the Father, we just weep for you, Father. Thank you for coming as our Savior, for dying for us, fulfilling the law and the prophets. That is the sacrificial law and all that the prophets spoke of you as Savior, Father. Thank you that something greater than the temple is here, that something wiser than Solomon is here, Father. And that's you, the Spirit of the living God. Father, we just pray double anointing and double portion for all who did this study with me, Father. As you took, when we took it, oh, the spirit man is so filled. <laughs> that you will fill us up till we overflow. That is, is enough for the journey back home. Thank you, Father. We love you, Abba. In your holy and most precious name, Jesus Christ. Yahweh Yeshua, the great I am who I am. Amen, amen. Amen. Woo! Amen. Oh, high five. We did it. Amen. God bless you, brother. I know this was encouraging to you. It was encouraging to me. I know that you felt the Holy Spirit in some way. I know that he's going to hide that word in your heart that you will not sin against him. And you're, you're going to go up here and shine the light that he's making shine in you. Amen. And through you and for his glory. God bless you. I'll see you home again. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Jesus loves you, beloved. Come to him today. He's waiting with arms wide open. He wants to fill you up and gives you, give you everything that you possibly need. He knows exactly what you need. He wants to give you what you want too. But he's going to lavish on you when you come to him. And say, yes, Father, I trust you. I trust you. Amen. Glory, hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. God bless you. In Jesus' name, I have to leave here in five minutes. Bye for now. Jesus loves you. Share this message.